Welcome to this mini series in the Magical Academic Note-Taking course on blocks. This is a four-part series and we are on part three. Part one talked about what makes blocks in Rome research unique and gave you an analogy for how to understand the uniqueness of Rome research blocks. Part two talked about the difference between blocks and pages and also gave you some ideas of how to type your pages so that you could organize yourself better for creating results in your Rome research graph. This is part three. And in part three, we are going to talk about block connections, which is where the real magic of blocks begins. So what are block connections? Well, in most note taking, filing or productivity tools, um, you are constantly asking yourself the question, where does this piece of information belong? So where does this block belong? But in Rome research, the most valuable question that you can ask yourself about blocks is, when do I want to see this again? And it is block connections that help you answer that question. So there are two types of block connections and then many subtypes within each of those types. The first type of block connections is block to page connections. So when you ask yourself the question, when do I want to see this again? You may choose to connect a block to a specific page and you make connections with that block and the page in one of the following ways. It's important to remember that blocks serve a page. Blocks are really, really important in their own right, but they add value to a page in several different ways. So, what are the ways you can connect a block to a page? So the first way, and these are in level of importance, from very important to important to less important to not important. Um, <clears throat> not important in quotation marks, because everything you do in Rome is important. It's just for the sake of the analogy, we use the words not important. So the first uh, way that you can connect the block to the page is you can actually write the block directly on the page. So in this case, a block appears on the page, usually in a summary detail or an output page. And that means that this is one of the most important blocks because the reason the block is on that page is because it is serving the main purpose of that page. So if it's a summary detail page, it's serving the purpose of providing the information that that page is supposed to present. And if it is an output page, it's super important because it's actually providing the output that Rome research will generate. So what's an example of an on-page, block-to-page connection? <clears throat> A few examples for you to explore. The first example is a block is referenced and becomes part of a paragraph in an output page. So the original block lives somewhere else, but you can actually reference it, and then the block would appear only on the page in a summary detail or output page uh, and then this right here is an example of a block like this, because as, an exam as it is an example, it serves an important purpose to this page that we are using right now. Um, it could be perhaps a journal response block on your daily notes page. So for example, <clears throat> I actually write 750 words every morning. I don't include my 750 words in my daily notes page because I don't like the size of the block that a 750 words output creates. So what I do is I then take my 750 words and divide it into mini blocks, which then sit right on my daily notes page. And the reason it's important to me that it's linked to the daily notes page is because these blocks are serving the purpose of this page. And the purpose of this page is to tell me what I was doing, thinking and working on, on that specific date. Another example is a block as a note from a specific source, and then it would live on your source page. So in academic writing, we assign a page to every source that we read. And so here's an example. You have blocks 
from our last example in the last video that are notes that live directly on this page. And the reason that they live on this page is because they serve the purpose of this page, which is to provide you with a source that lists all of the ideas, notes, and creations that came from that source. The next example of how you can link blocks to a page is the example that is important but perhaps not as important as a block sitting on a page and that is a block that gets nested under a page backlink. This links the block and the page as a linked reference because you've nested under that page name. This is less important because it means that you haven't yet decided that that block is important enough to live on the page that you have nested under. And if you have really clear processes, you will have a way to move those blocks that become more important from linked references into your main page, which brings them into um, the more important connection, which is on page blocks. So an example of this one would be you're taking notes um, on a new source on your daily notes page and you nest your notes underneath a source page link so that you can relate your notes both to the date that you are taking those notes and also to the source page. And as I said, if you have strong processes, as those of you who are taking magical academic note taking do, you will get to move important blocks to the to on blocks later on in the in the process on page blocks. Another example of why you might nest blocks under a page backlink is if you are synthesizing blocks on a source page <clears throat> and you realize that you'd like to see many of those blocks again when you are reviewing a particular topic. So then you would nest it under the topic page backlink. A topic page is an output page that we use in magical academic note-taking note to collate notes that might go into a section of a larger piece of output like a thesis. The, another um, way you can link blocks to pages, and we are again going down in importance, is you could have a page to a page link. What this does is it links all of the blocks on a page to another page. This is less important because you're not specifying a particular block that belongs on the page you are linking it to. You're saying all of these blocks might be related. And again, within your processes, those blocks will move around as you work through them. So an example of a page to page link is right here. If you look at the graphic, um, the screenshot of my Save the Cat Writes a Novel source page, you'll see that I have actually included a, um, a page link. I have linked it to the Outlining Your Novel University of Dundee course page because that is the course that I am creating um, using these notes to create. <clears throat> so I haven't specified a single note that goes on this page. I have just said all of these notes might be relevant to that particular page. The last way you can connect blocks to pages is through page mentions. And that just means you are not putting double brackets about around the page. So this would link your blocks to a main page as an unlinked reference. And that means they are not important to you. So you actually don't even want to see them on the main body or in the linked references when you have that page open. Because as you know, you actually have to go and click the unlinked references arrow right here to be able to see those unlinked references. So let's say for example, I was doing an, um, I was spending some time on cleaning up the Save the Cat um, page. And so I'm writing a block on my daily notes page where I'm saying, cleaning up Save the Cat page, but I don't necessarily need to see that um, in my linked references, especially if I'm using this purely um, for content. I don't need to see the actual process of uh, progress of my process. So I would just not link that, but I would mention Save the Cat so that if I did want to see 
how my uh, how often I had worked on it. I could click on unlinked references and perhaps link them or move them up if I was creating a different page. So that is block to page connections. But there's actually another way that you can link blocks together. And that is through block to block connections. And I have kind of organized these in the same way as uh, very important to important to less important. <clears throat> and you can see these here. Um, the first way we make block to block connections is that we nest. And we consider that if they are blocks are nested, that they those blocks become very important um, in within the context that they are placed. Um, the reason that they are very important is because you have indented them. So you have established a relationship. Nesting provides a clear, traceable path to uh, of the relationship between the atomic thoughts and even it uh, gives a block an immediate job to do, which is defining your thought process. So within magical academic note taking, we nest our blocks to trace our entire thought process in coming up with the possible content that we are going to use in our thesis, dissertation, or academic journal. So from the moment we read a fleeting note right through to the, the development of a Z note, we can actually trace where that thought came from. And you can see some of this evidenced in the screenshot I have above. So you'll see this very first um, section, I had a block that was a fleeting note, which was a note that I took uh, when I was reading the source, uh, sorry, which is a quote directly from the source. Then I have my literature note, which is the a fleeting note in my own words, and then I have what I call a realization note, which is in our magical academic note-taking Zettelkasten process, um, which is where I make a connection within the note based on what I have been reading. So nesting your notes, uh, your blocks, and making block-to-block -block connections through nesting is the most important way you can um, create relationships between your blocks because not only does it create a relationship, it also um, illustrates a thought process. Another way that you can <clears throat> link blocks to blocks is through tagging. Um, and that is important because a tag serves that super important question of when would I like to see this again? So for example, if you have a note that is on a source page, like this Save the Cat source page, but you feel as though you may want to see it again when you're thinking about that topic, you can actually put a tag in at the block level. And this gives a note a job to do, but not yet. So if I were interested in the dark night of the soul, I could just basically tag that. It becomes a block to a page relationship, but it also becomes a block to block relationship because it's already nested within other blocks as well. The last way to relate block to block connections is um, through serendipity. So that is less important, but it is extremely powerful. And it is when you are <clears throat> recognizing serendipity in your Rome graph that you see, you begin to see Rome actually talking back to you. So if all of your blocks are written very well, they contain a single atomic thought and the subject is very clear, there's really no need to actually connect a block at all. Because what you can do is just type your double, bra your double brackets, not brackets, parentheses, and then start searching. <clears throat> and <clears throat> Rome Research will go through all of your notes. I copied that from my other database. That's why um, Dark Knight of the Soul is not coming up. It will go through all of your notes and list them for you. And you can actually go through and make serendipitous connections between your blocks.
We talk a lot more about how to make block connections between an original block and a referenced block within the create session of the magical note taking. So we won't discuss that here, but that is the final point of how blocks are connected. And that is perhaps the most powerful when you are creating in Rome um, way of connecting blocks together. So those are block connections. Hope you enjoyed that lesson. Um, in the next lesson, we are going to be talking about probably what might be a little bit of a controversial subject, but it helps me think, um, and that is block types. Onwards and upwards. <laughs>